Next projection we're going to do is the L5-S1 spot shot, specifically looking at the space between the lumbar fifth vertebrae and the segment of S1 or sacral 1. So first things first, you're going to switch to an 8 by 10 inch cassette. You're going to go into the bucky. If you have a 10 by 12, which is more likely in most facilities, like this cassette is now, that's totally fine. You'll just call an 8 smaller. Put your left marker on. And then make sure your patient is still in true lateral. So again, just go through, make sure that the shoulders and the hips are aligned with one another. Use the back of your hand. And now you're ready to center. So this centering is two inches posterior to the elevated ASIS and an inch and a half below the iliac crest. Okay, so perpendicular beam is what's recommended to begin. And again, I'm palmating my field out quite small. So two inches back from the elevated ASIS, inch and a half below the iliac crest. You can use that three finger method again if you'd like, but I have a cooler trick I'm gonna show you. I'll take pictures of it. The easiest thing to do is take an L with your hand or a backwards L with your right hand if it's the other side that you're working on and put that L just so that it's your thumb is at the base of the iliac crest and the first or second digit, excuse me, is at the top of the iliac crest and make a full 90 degrees L. Where your first knuckle here for your MCP and the tip of your thumb where a square meets that is typically where your centering is going to be. If you center to that spot, you're going to get your spot shot. You can't see it from that angle. Again, I'm going to post a picture of this. But right now, this is where I centered for my two inches back and my inch and a half below. The center of my CR is directly at the point meeting that knuckle and the tip of that thumb. So anytime I do a lateral lumbar spine, I follow up directly with my spot shot. And I put my hand directly like in that L shape. And again, just draw a line from the knuckle and the tip of the thumb. And where those two points meet is where my central ray is directed. The other thing to keep in mind, so that's correct for your standard, so you can perform that in lab. Typically, though, in the real world, we do employ that small angle. Your Merrill's tells you that you can do a 5 to 8 degree caudal angle. In the real world, we typically just do the five degree angle, so that's all I'm gonna focus on at the moment. I'm gonna bring it back to the lateral position, so the top of the iliac crest. So if I put a five degree angle on this tube caudally, biggest thing, thing number one, touch the tube, touch the bucky. Immediately after changing that direction of the CR, you should immediately go down to your bucky and make sure that you're still aligned. See, right now I didn't have everything centered, so I'm limited on the amount of up and down movement that I have. So I would have to move the patient. In this scenario, this is a lot of extra work. I'm going to move him up, and then I can go ahead and recenter, and then realign my bucky tube. So it's a lot better if you actually start your cassette tray in the center of the patient, then you have more wiggle room. Otherwise, that's how you correct it. You'll move your patient up and that will give you more space to work with for the bucky movement. But what I was trying to get at is that five degree angle naturally put me at my new centering point. I didn't have to change my centering at all. The five degree angle between the iliac crest and L5-S1 is almost exactly on a typical patient where your central ray is going to be directed as long as you keep it along the mid-coronal plane. Okay, so again, from the iliac crest to L5-S1, you can either use that little L trick if you're using a perpendicular beam, or you can put on your five degree angle, verify it with that L trick, make sure you realign the bucky for that five degree difference caudally. Still use that left marker, still use this lead shield behind the patient for scatter, and go ahead and expose your image.